Good morning. Wednesday morning, heading out to Tel Aviv to Powtoon for the day. But first, a bright and early meeting. One of the more exciting meetings I've had in probably several years. Last week, I got a mysterious message on LinkedIn. Wow, that sounds very dramatic. And then last night, a follow-up message on WhatsApp from someone named Omri Kaspi. You might have heard of him. He's been playing in the NBA for a couple of years, and he just came back to Israel to play for Maccabi. He's also a very successful businessman. Pretty excited to catch up with him, hear what he's up to, just get to know the guy. Yeah, I'm a bit of a fanboy. I'm very excited about catching up with Powtoon, seeing what's up over there. It's going to be a great day. Here we go. Tel Aviv, heading to Powtoon first before my meeting with Omri. Got here pretty quickly, no traffic, so I'm going to write an ink article and then jump in a get instead of driving to where I'm meeting him because literally parking there will take me 45 minutes. But uh, yeah, super duper pumped to meet the guy. He's like on the cornflakes boxes in this country. He was like, because uh, he was in the NBA, you know, not many Israelis in the NBA, so yeah, pretty excited. Anyway, heading to Powtoon now. It's been a while because I've been in America, but been working over there pretty hard on some pretty exciting stuff with Powtoon, including last week an article in Read Write and Forbes about Powtoon's traction. An amazing company. Years ago, I'm sitting in a uh, restaurant in Tel Aviv, and a very tall individual walks in. Mm -hmm. And I'm not often the type of, type of guy to like walk over like a fanboy and ask for a selfie. But when Omri Kospi walks into the restaurant, there was no <laughs> chance I was missing that opportunity. Omri Kospi, wow. dude, I'm like a huge fanboy, man. I am you, of yours as well. Oh, shut up, get out of here, dude. Listen, yeah. man, you're first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't often go religious on my vlog, but you're like a walking kiddush Hashem. You sanctify God's name in the world. You're a representative in the world, wow. dude. Uh, NBA man doesn't get NBA much is, doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, doesn't get much better than that. Unbelievable. So it's an honor. Uh, listen, man, you Privilege. you're 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 all over the news in Israel because you're an NBA star. You're going to be another NBA star down the road. You know that's that's my uh, that's my hope for you. But right now you're back in Israel playing for Maccabi, which is no small deal. Maccabi's quite quite an unbelievable basketball team. But give me your like 45 second background. Where did Omri Kaspi grow up? What's your story? What's your deal? Talk to me. I grew me. up in Israel, Yavne. Uh, played for Maccabi when I was 13, 14 years old. I served in the army for three years from 18 to 21. When I was 21, I got drafted by the Kings uh, to go to the NBA. I had to come back to Israel to get released from the army and then to go back to the US. By the way, when you got that first like initial, I guess, I guess it was, was it an email back then or a phone no, call? No, it was actually the NBA draft. It was three in the morning, four in the morning here in Israel. Yeah. David Stern goes up on stage and say, on the 20, in the third, 23rd pick. In the 23rd 2000, pick, that's a good number. Look, yeah, at, look, look at your shirt, man. Yeah. 23rd pick, I love 23, it. baby. It's a nice <laughs> number. I like it. All right. So 23rd pick, second minute case of Michael Murkowski from Israel, from Yavne, Israel. And it's an amazing, amazing day. And, um, you know, a day you'll cherish for the rest of your life. You know, 100%. Of these days you no know, question. So. Were there, uh, pardon my ignorance, but were there any Israeli NBA players before you? No, I'm the, the first. There are others uh, that came after. Gal Mecca was there uh, a couple years ago, and there's another guy here in Israel that got ruling going to go into the NBA in the next year or so. Wow. So it would be great. But you, like, listen, here's the thing, right? So when I originally heard Israeli guys in the NBA, I'm like thinking to myself, all right, he's like, gonna, he's going to bench warmer. He's not going to, he's not going to get, you know, he's not going to get on the court. But you were like kicking some serious butt. Like, what, what were you averaging? So my rookie year averaged about 10, 10 and a half points a game, and uh, my best year of average. Well, and it was great. I mean, it was an amazing experience. I learned so much about myself, about basketball, about life. You know, when I got drafted in 2009, it was a whole new world. You know, the, the, the first year of Twitter, it was like the second year of Facebook right. or whatever. I followed you this morning, uh, by the way. I don't know how I wasn't following you. This morning. <laughs> <laughs> so back then, you know, I didn't know much about the NBA. It wasn't as popular as it is today. Right. And, you, know, you know, games weren't televised as much. And, and I learned so much about the league and the basketball. So it's, it's a privilege. The owner to me is, is that I see kids now in Israel that playing in junior teams and stuff and say, hey, I want to be in the NBA. And they dream about that. When I was 16, 15 years old, nobody even thought about right. NBA. It was like this, old, this huge and crazy market around the world. Right. What about like socially? I, I was always curious about like when you get, to, you get to the NBA, you're like dealing with these guys who are like come from a completely different background than you like you could not get more different. Was it easy for you to like integrate socially with hang out with the guys yeah, in the locker room felt, and stuff? Yeah, I always felt, you know, part of the team and part of the family and it was great. You know, I, I felt that I grew up in a family that always, you know, was very straightforward, honest, humble, you know, and and I always, you know, one of the things that I, I felt like was a, 
uh, something that I wanted to kind of do it myself is, is I started my foundation and I brought celebrities and NBA players to Israel to kind of show them how beautiful our country is. Love it. Uh, the technology about here and, and our beautiful country and how small our country is. Sometimes Love it. it's so, you know, in the history, Jerusalem and everything. So, Love it, man. Love it. Uh, we so, did a couple of different trips. Where, where do you have the English from? Oh, thank you for that first. No, you sound totally American. Been in the U.S. for 10 years. Most of uh, my adult life, you know, let's say adult life started in Judaism at 13. So I moved to the U.S. when I was 21. So it was about eight years. And, and I lived, you know, more than 10 years in the U.S. So it's right. been great. All right, so here's one thing I noticed about you. said the word humble just now, you know, your family. Like, we've been hanging out now for about a half an hour. I think like 20 people came over to you, asked you for selfies. And like, <laughs> you know, when you're a celebrity, and, you know, not to make a comparison, but even the couple of people that come over to me and ask me, you know, I follow you online. I'm not going to say it annoys me. It doesn't annoy me. But like, you're like super in every single person comes over to you you like smile you're nice like that's that's you know that's a unique thing so I, I want to give you props for that like it, it's got to get annoying at some point it doesn't annoy yeah, you in a sense you know but like, essentially I think it's our it's a first of all, it's a privilege to be in this position to, to represent our, our country and our city and our community and and essentially people show us signs of appreciation it's part of, of us giving back and love it's it. like I, you know I want to be a part of it I love it you want to be in this position to the people yep. cherish what you do 100 percent you do it 100 and you know light a small candle in the world. Love it, love it. So in addition to you being a basketball star, you actually wear a completely different hat. And that's pretty much the, the, the I guess, the reason, one of the reasons we're meeting today. Tell me about that, what you do in the business sector, size basketball. So my own career, I was invested mostly in real estate and, and some startups that I, I, I looked up over the years and that I liked what they do and I felt like I can contribute in other ways. Just Shout out to Day2 because that day is a two, sick company. <laughs> Crazy awesome company. So day2 day is one of them obviously and, and over the last year or so I, I started getting into cannabis and pharmaceutical cannabis and right. kind of getting into the technology of cannabis and there's so much opportunity uh, to be made there and, and I'm very intrigued about you know the whole industry kind of shaping up and, and being a part of that. When you say that you're invested in real estate, you're again being a little humble. Tell me about your real estate business for one minute. So in 2014, me and my best friend from Israel started a small real estate company. He, uh, he moved to the U.S. I played for the Cavaliers at the time and we felt like there's an opportunity in the market that we can uh, find a niche in, in, the, in the industry of real estate in Cleveland, Ohio, downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we started buying multifamily condominiums, apartments at the time. Uh, we never over leveraged with banks. We always felt like you know, we want to be on the safe side, find it as a cash flow business. And, you know, my best friend Adam still lives there. It's funny that I moved him to the U.S. and I got back to Israel now. But, um, yeah, it's been great. Thank God. Dude, first of all, how tall are you? I'm 6'9", 206. I'm an, I'm, you're 206 pounds? 206 centimeters. Oh, I thought you were so saying your weight. Uh, 200, 225 pounds. 230. So, I'm a little overweight. I gotta, I gotta get in shape. <laughs> I hope that's a joke. Wait, so you're six nine? What size shoe are you? Uh, Fourteen. Oh, these oh, yeah. Doesn't look so. I'm size twelve. We're pretty close. Dude, listen, man. Super duper honored to meet you. I'm serious. Oh, like, you know, I, I may have like when you link when you LinkedIn messaged me, I'm like, huh? What? <laughs> Umri Cosby? But I uh, know. But listen, dude. Really, like, if, it goes without saying. But really, anything I can do to help you in, in any yeah, of the things, sure. you're, you, you got a lot of things going on. Uh, but if there's ever anything I can do to help you. You know, don't even hesitate for a second. I, I know we talked about a couple of things that I'm gonna hopefully help with. On, uh, on on my end, what you can help me with is to come surprise my kid next week, hopefully. <laughs> but if not, if not for the bar mitzvah, more importantly, get me some some Akabi tickets because my kids oh, will think I'm the coolest dad ever. That's all I'm saying. Oh, but my uh, guest. listen, man, really, anything I do to help you, let me know and uh, kick butt on Akabi, dude. And I'm excited to see you know what you do there and then down the road back in the NBA. Exactly, all right, man. Thanks so Thanks much for your so time much. today. I appreciate it. All right, talk about meeting a giant. I am beyond impressed with that guy, and I'm not talking about his basketball skills, nor am I talking about his entrepreneurial skills or his investments. Mega, mega mensch. More to come on that front. Stay tuned, now back to Powtoon. I'm doing something I don't do very often, and I'm vlogging at night because a friend of mine, Natanel Alkobi, started a new smoked meat business, and he invited me to his house for a meat fest. So I'm going there now, and hopefully there'll be sufficient lighting for you to see the insanity that is about to ensue.
my God. See you tomorrow.